Welcome to Rebel Rookies Backyard Edition. I'm Laura Geitz, a former Australian netball player, and I've designed a series of workouts that you can do to exercise at home and keep fit and active. First up, I'm going to run you through the equipment you need for today's Rebel Rookies Backyard Workout. But don't worry, if you don't have anything or everything at home, we've got some great alternatives. Recommended Rebel equipment. We've got our yoga or exercise mat. But if you don't have one of those, you can easily just lay a towel down on the ground. Um, I'll be also using some resistant bands, but again, you can just use your body weight for those exercises. And finally, I've got some hurdles, but you can just lay down some brooms or any household appliances or even some sticks that you find around the backyard. Okay, so we're going to start with our one minute warm up jog. So just really nice and easy to begin. Wake up those muscles, get the blood pumping. Once you feel like you can, pick up the pace a little bit. Lift those knees up a little bit higher. Pump those arms a little bit faster and your legs will follow suit. Just on the spot, so you can do this absolutely anywhere. Focus on having really quick contact with the ground. So every time your foot hits the ground, it comes up really nice and quick. All right, we've got 10 seconds to go. Last 10, guys. And stop there, well done. So after we've finished our warm up jog, we're gonna move into some dynamic stretches. So with this, we're down on all fours. Now you wanna imagine that you've got a bar or a cup of coffee on your back and you're not allowed to let it fall off while you move. So opposite arm, opposite leg, Nice control through our core, keep your bottoms down, and we're gonna work for 10. Nice slow movements with control. Our third part of the warm up is going to be focusing on warming up our lower back and our lower limbs. So we're going to go into some mountain climbers, some crucifixes on the ground and also some inchworms. So we start with our feet shoulder width apart. You're basically going to squat down as if you're about to sit in a chair. This uh, gives really good flexibility through our groins and also warms up our glutes. So once you've completed one, switch over and the other side. Make sure your knees don't go over the front of your shoes. We're gonna do 10 of these. You wanna make sure too that you're keeping your core nice and strong. So when I say that, imagine somebody's gonna come up and give you a bit of a punch in your tummy and you've got to tense nice and tight so it doesn't hurt. Okay, so we're going to move into some mountain climbers. So this is gonna get the heart rate up a little bit. So again, down on all fours, it's like jogging on the spot, but you're going to bring your knees up to your chest. We're gonna do 10 of these. Okay, so our next exercise is inchworms, and this works on our strength and flexibility of our hamstrings. So you're down in a plank position, Nice control again. And what you're gonna do is walk your feet up to your hands as far as you can possibly go. All right, we're gonna do five of these.
All right, so we are going to do some crucifixes now. As we said in the intro, this really warms up our backs. So lay down, arms out, and you're going to bring your opposite leg to your opposite arm. Don't let your hips roll around too much. You want to keep nice and stable through your pelvis. We're going to do 10 of these each side. Fourth part of the warm up is going to be a little bit more active. We should be feeling nice and warm by this stage, so we're going to incorporate some mini suicides and some change of direction. So as you can see, I've just laid some cones out. You can use water bottles and you're gonna start from the start point, work up. It will make sense as you see me do it. To the first cone, back to the start. To the second cone, back to the start. Third cone, back to the start. Get nice and low on the turns. Working for a minute. Pick up the pace as you go. Finally, make sure you keep a water bottle and a towel handy because we might be getting a bit of a sweat up. If you're already feeling nice and warm, let's get stuck into our workout. Alrighty, the first exercise we're going to do is crab walks and we're gonna do about 10 to 12 of these each side. This particular exercise really focuses in on our glutes or the big muscles in our bottom, which is a really important muscle to make sure is nice and strong for out there on the netball court. I'm gonna be using this resistance band, but you can easily do it with no band and just your body weight. So feet, is, feet are shoulder width apart, okay? You're sitting down in that squat position. Basically, you don't want your knees going over your toes, okay? So nice and strong through your bottoms and your core and your pelvis. And basically, like a crab, you're just gonna be doing a couple of movements. We're doing 10 to 12 each side of these. So seated position, knees in line with my toes, not over, and little movements. Little sideward steps. Don't let your, your feet come in too close to one another and you should really feel this burning on the outside of those glute muscles. All right, back the other way. This is also a really good exercise for strengthening those little intrinsic muscles around our knees. Good job, everyone. All right, so our next exercise is split squat jumps. These are a little bit of a burner. Uh, we're gonna do about 10 of these each side. And this focuses on our power and strength, another important element out on the netball court. So you're gonna get in that split squat stance, All right, opposite arm to the foot that is forward, sitting down in that squat position, jump up, land in that split squat, all right? Once you have that movement, we're gonna speed it up and go for 10. Try to get some really nice power up in the air. Good job, that's a killer. Our third exercise is side plank dips. We're gonna do about 10 to 12 of these each side and this focuses on strengthening our obliques. So on your elbow, feet one on top of the other, other arm in the air, or on your hip, whatever's comfortable. You're going to drop that bottom hip down to the ground and push up. Ten to twelve each side. This is actually a bit of a silent assassin, this one. Doesn't look that hard, but it really targets those obliques and our core. Once you've completed, stay in that plank, switch over and do the other side. Really lift those hips up. Try not to get lazy and sag through that core section. Last few. 
Good job. You might not like me after this one. This is our fourth exercise. It is mini suicides. Same as the suicide we just did earlier. We're going to do the same format. Instead of turning out of the cones and coming back and running, we're backwards running. All right, so I'm going to do two set sets of these. Should take me about 30 seconds. Starting point, first cone, back to the start. Second cone, back to the start. Third cone, back to the start. Fourth cone, obstruction for the dog, <laughs> back to the start. Again, if you want to make that easier or harder, one set should take you about 15 seconds. If you want to do three to four sets, that's about a minute's worth of work. Should really get the heart rate going, as you can tell. Okay, our fifth exercise is focusing in on our arms, particularly our triceps, and we're going to be doing some bench dips. So we're going to do about 10 to 12 of these. So find a chair, bench, anything you've got laying around. All right, you're gonna put your feet out in front of you. Arms back of the palms on the, on the chair. Drop down into a dip and come up. So we're gonna do 10 to 12 of these. You can make this as difficult as you want by going as low as you want. If you can't go all the way down, you could even put a net ball under your bottom. Once you hit the ball, come back up again. You should really feel just this one start to burn in the back of your arms. Push through your chest as you come up. All right, that's one of my favorites. Gets those guns nice and strong. Our sixth exercise is body weight squats with a pulse. We're gonna be shifting the attention from our upper body to our lower body with this exercise. So you can just do this with no resistant bands if you don't have any. So arms out in front, feet shoulder width apart. You're gonna go down into that squat position. Again, remember it's really important that we don't let our knees track over the front of our shoes. You wanna keep that alignment nice and straight. You're gonna go in that squat position and then you're gonna do 10 small pulses at the bottom, okay? I'm gonna put this band on over my knees if you've got one at home and you do want to make it a little bit trickier for yourself, pop it just above your knees, feet shoulder width apart, that squat position. All right, let's go for 10 pulses. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Step up, back down in our squat position, straight into our pulses. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Up, we're gonna do five of these. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and up. Four, five. You should really feel those bottoms burning. Up again. If you wanna make that really difficult, you can do sets from five up to 10, and you'll definitely get the burn. Moving into our seventh exercise is body weight RDLs. And this is going to incorporate a little bit of core work and also some balance. So you're on one leg. Your other leg is just out the back. You're gonna hold the ball in front of you and basically you come down not too low, just so the ball's either in line or just below your knee. And then you come up, okay? So this particular exercise, as we mentioned earlier, focuses on our balance and it is a strengthener for our glutes and our hamstring which are two really important muscle groups for netballers okay so i'll do it on the side you're going to do 10 to uh, 12 each side you can go up to 15 if you'd like to and you can also if you're feeling like you want to make this a little bit harder you can come down Come up into that position, lift the ball above your head in a bit of a 
high knee position. Now, as you can see, it gives you a bit of a wobbly effect, or you might be much better at this than me. But the concentration must be there. So even pick a spot on the ground. Whoa. That's not moving and that can sometimes help. Once you've done one side, flip it over and the other. You should feel that glute and hamstring really taking most of the load during this exercise. As I said, anywhere from 10 to 15 each side. You can see I'm a bit better balanced this side than the other, which you will probably find as well. If you're right-handed, you'll find your right side naturally a little bit easier. Our eighth exercise is a little hurdle matrix, and this is a really important exercise for netball because we are focusing on strengthening the muscles around our knee as injury prevention. This is all about landing and power. So we know that knees are really important in netball and we know that we can hit the ground from full pace to a full halt in one motion. So starting in the middle, if you don't have hurdles, water bottles, markers are completely fine. You're starting from two feet in the middle. You're going to jump over the first one and land single leg. Hold for three seconds, okay? The important thing is, I'll just do that one again, is on the landing, don't let your knee wobble. You wanna keep your knee nice and strong and sturdy. All right, so again, okay, turn that glute on. It'll keep you nice and strong, okay. Then you're going to go back, landing on that right leg. So we're just working the right leg first. Two feet, back, hold for three seconds, land on that right foot. This is the side ones, they get a little bit trickier. You're starting two feet in the middle. You're going to turn and land facing out again on your right leg. Hold for three seconds, back to the middle. We're going that way, landing on our right leg. Try and stick that landing. Don't let the knee wobble. All right, back to the middle. You're going to do your left leg. Okay, so I'll do it really quickly. Landing. Facing. All right, now, if you wanna make this really tricky, you can have a partner, mum, dad, sister, brother, whoever, standing in front, delivering you a ball. Okay, so when you come out and land, you're gonna catch that ball one leg. Well done. You've made it to the end. This is our last exercise and it's always a cracker. We have to finish the workout with a nice little ab burner. So we've got a plank series for you to finish it off. So what's important is you're down on your elbows, you're up, don't let your bums go high in the air. You wanna bring your hips down as close as you possibly can because that will really work that bottom part of your pelvic floor and your core. Now, if that's too super easy for you superstars out there, you can add it in, add a couple of extra little bits and pieces in. So you can add in some shoulder touches, come up, down into a push-up, back down into the plank. Shoulder taps, up, down into a push-up, back, okay? Once you've done, say, 10 of those, then you can go into lifting your legs off the ground, one at a time, making sure we're keeping our bottoms or our hips as close to the ground as we can. And you've got nice control. Two minutes worth. Come back into that static hold. Great job guys, stick with me. This is the last one. You're doing so well. And stop there. Great job everyone, you're done.
Well, that's our workout done. Great job, everyone. I hope you really enjoyed this installment of Rebel Rookies Backyard Edition. Make sure you subscribe to the Rebel channel for more great content from me and some other amazing Aussie athletes to help you stay healthy and active during this time. See you next time.